<sighs> Between quiet on the set, these old videos of Diddy and Justin Bieber and Usher's old Howard Stern interview. We're sending you New over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some Camp? Yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah, but you were 13. What were yeah, you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And I saw. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. Uh huh. Jody C., Mary okay? J. Blige. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> see? That eight passenger scandal. You know, it seems like people are thinking a bit more about child actors and children in entertainment in general. And that's a conversation I have been having with folks in my life for the past year as well. So obviously I wanted to talk about it with y'all. But before we do that, bonjour nakam hi and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. My name's Khadija. If you're new, feel free to take a look around, suss out the vibe. I just sit in my living room and talk about whatever I want. And today I want to tease, untangle, unpack my confusing flip flop, flippy flip flopping ass feelings around child entertainers. So let's get into it. Look, cold turkey might be cute on sandwiches and you know, wraps and stuff like that. Well, like turkey that you, anyway, cold turkey is great on sandwiches, but there are better ways to break your bad habits. And no, I'm not talking about some St. Clair living single woo 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 stuff. I'm talking about today's sponsor. Fume. Not every bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. You know, the, the, the deep pit void of having a bad habit that you feel like you shouldn't be doing, but the shame that, you know what? Moving on. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with removable parts and magnets for fidgeting giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your bad habit. They also launched a base in January, which is a magnet, and you can put your little fume thing on top of the magnet, and it looks so cute. And I, my dumb ass, I was trying to open it at first. Anyway, I went cross-eyed. <laughs> the first flavor I tried was sparkling grapefruit, because one thing about me, I love grapefruit, and it was so good. It's minty a little bit, but it also just feels fresh. I don't know how to describe it. It seems like a wild concept, but then you do it and it just makes sense. Truly, really? my breath feels so minty fresh. I'm like, <sighs> easy, easy, yeah. And it looks so sleek. Listen, stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason you can be one of them. So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits, yes ma'am, by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash Khadija or scan the QR code and use code Khadija to get 10% off when you get the journey pack. That's tryfume and use code Khadija to save an additional 10% off your order today. Thank you again to Fume for sponsoring today's video. So obviously children have been in the entertainment industry since the entertainment industry was the entertainment industry. You know what I'm saying? One of the biggest stars that a lot of us will think of, old Hollywood, Miss Shirley Temple. Her story is actually kind of uh, dark. She had a lot of experiences with creepy, creepy people. And she was also in a thing called baby burlesque. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a casting couch video. I don't know, we'll see. But it seems that as long as children have been in entertainment, they have been exploited, taken advantage of, and in some of the worst cases, all of that and X abuse. So when I'm thinking about children in entertainment, the first question that pops into my mind is, is it right? How ethical is it? And for me to answer that question, I have to think about a few things. Firstly, there's a power imbalance between any situation where there is a child and a grown adult because we live in a gerontocracy. We believe that you need to defer to the elders. Whoever is the eldest is the authority in any situation. If we're just out somewhere in the world and we get stranded on an island before we start implementing our own laws, we're going to refer back to what we know. And if there are children on that island, the children need to follow what the adults say. Now we have that, but then you add an employment situation on top of that 
where not only is the adult in charge of you, the authority, but they're also your boss. They're also financially responsible for you. Now that wouldn't be an issue if children weren't also charged with being the breadwinners of their family. So there's an added pressure there. You have to defer to the adults around you, not just the ones that are employing you, that are signing your checks, but also your parents, your guardians. And if they want you to do something or be in something, even if you don't maybe want to, you have to respect them because they're the adults. They're paying you, they're employing you and your own parents. Maybe they financially need this. And this is seen not just in traditional entertainment, but also online where you have family channels. We've seen the dark side of family channels where it's mostly dependent on the children for content and there aren't, as far as I know yet, maybe Michigan or somewhere is looking into laws to protect child influencers, but there aren't laws and protections like there are in Hollywood. And even in Hollywood, those laws and protections aren't federal legislation. Every state can just decide what they want to do. And if you go outside of the states, different parts of the world have different laws as well, which is kind of interesting because you'd think if one thing we could all agree on, it would be that like the children need to be safe and protected, but... Who knows? But all of this is to say that a child is only as safe as the adults that are around them. Another thing I have to consider if I ask the question, well, is it ethical? Is that what about the fact that some children wanna be child stars? I wanted to act growing up. I wanted to be in movies and TV shows. I wanted to perform. That was just my thing and I still like to do it. So it's not something that I thought about that went away just because I got older. It's something that I really care about and I know what it's like to want that. And shouldn't children have representation? Shouldn't, ch shouldn't children, if we want some sort of autonomy for them, be able to decide, hey, I wanna go into acting. I wanna do X, Y, Z. We want kids to feel free to explore their identities, right? No matter what that looks like. For me, if I'm saying I want children to be able to explore their identities, try on different things, see what works, what doesn't, that goes for a lot of stuff. It's not these art forms and these activities that are necessarily exploitative. It's the people in charge of them. Again, a child is only ever gonna be as safe as the adults around them. So yeah, I do think that children should be allowed to explore this industry or these industries. But another question that pops up is can a child understand the magnitude of what being in the entertainment industry or being an online influencer, having millions of people view and see your content, watch you grow up, can they understand the magnitude of that? Really? I don't think so. And it's not to say that children are stupid. It's to say when you have more time on this earth, when you have more time in general, it's not that you're all of a sudden more wise than other people, but I would hope that having more time breeds a bit more perspective. I'm 31, so I can look back at my kid self and say, I am actually kind of grateful that I didn't end up in this industry, however it, if it would have even happened, because also like, poor black child of immigrants. Come on, like the rarity of that happening with all these Nepo babies running around, girl, please. But if it were to have happened, I'm kind of grateful it didn't because I look at all the stuff that I went through as a teenager, as a young adult throughout my 20s without being in the public eye. And thank God, because it was a mess. It was a mess. Uh, it might have been even worse, not just doing it in the public eye, but having a full-time job that wasn't regular, feeling alienated from other people my age, because another thing that children might not understand the magnitude of is you're working, yes, and maybe your other friends have jobs, but they don't have jobs like you. They don't have jobs where a lot of people are gonna know their name and it almost feels super high stakes even though it should be something fun like entertainment. It still is very serious because people take their entertainment real seriously actually. When I answer all those questions, I'm still in the middle. So maybe let me add some observations to help. An observation that I have on the it's not ethical is that we as a public seem to love to see a public downfall a public spectacle. There's just a lot of anticipation when it comes to child stars, especially about how they're gonna grow up and if they're gonna lose it. Every time a child star rises to the ranks of an Amanda Bynes or a Raven Simone, the gods flip a coin, that old thing, you know? And I'm saying this because 
we as a public need to take responsibility for the fact that, yeah, the media likes to shove it down our throats and be all like, oh my God, can you believe X child star, blah, blah, blah. But we're still doing the same things online without the media pushing these things. Like people as individuals are online speculating about Amanda Bynes, speculating about all sorts of people or always talking about or talking about what these celebs are going through, have gone through, all that. So we can't just blame the media and say, well, if the media didn't give it to us, we wouldn't be interested because it seems like we're still interested. And so because of that, how can we say it is ethical and great and right to have child stars and children in the entertainment industry when you have the whole aspect of the adults around them maybe not being safe and then you have the audience that consumes them also not being safe. People wanna say, oh, Aaron Carter, rest in peace. But when he was alive and going through his things, there wasn't as much compassion for him. It was more so a, ooh, Aaron Carter, bro, is he good? But sometimes our concern can be masking a more sinister schadenfreude kind of like, ooh, this is gossip, this is tea, this is ooh. And I think we just all need to be more honest with ourselves about that and confront that as opposed to just blaming the parents and guardians in these industries and the media for putting these children in these positions because the public also has a role to play. I'm just saying, listen, I'm not saying this from a high horse. I'm saying this from somewhere where when I was a kid and saw Brittany shaving her head, I was like, she lost it. Just like the rest of them, you know? It's not judgment. These are observations. When I did a video on youth liberation with Andrewism a few years ago, it taught me a lot about my own hidden internal biases around the babies. It's an interesting thing that you walk through when you're going through different phases of your life, the further away you get from being a teenager and a kid, the less you remember about it. And I think the less compassion and consideration you have, not in terms of caring about the kids, but in terms of seeing the kids as autonomous beings. I think it's difficult to manage and juggle. How do I treat my child like a person who is gonna be an independent, grown adult one day that's gonna have their own ideas that might not be the same as mine, who's gonna be their own person basically. How do I manage that? But also, how do I listen to them? How do I encourage their ideas and their thinking? How do I encourage them to challenge things and ask questions to not completely fall down at authority? but to actually think for themselves whilst also giving them structure, giving them a bit of authority, giving them a safety net to learn and grow within that is still protected, that is still a guardianship, but is not overbearing. And it's difficult. I don't have kids, y'all, and I have chosen not to have kids on purpose, intentionally. It's a big responsibility. You are raising a human being that is going to interact with other human beings and they might cause harm to other people. Or the other side to that coin, they might be harmed. And what do you do? I've said to myself, if I ever had kids, it'd be a problem because the minute I find out that somebody's bullying them, I don't care how old the other kid is, I will fight that child because you will not bully my child. <laughs> what am I even saying? But in the way that we try to protect and look over kids without considering simultaneously that autonomy that, that kids are gonna grow up, that they're not frozen in time. We allow for children to grow up and not really have a sense, not only of themselves, but, oh, I got it, here it is, sorry, it took me a second. I, I, Y'all know I don't really work with a script, so sometimes it's a little all over the place, but here we go. My vision and idea for if I could go back over and be a child again with the kind of guardianship that I would want, and I'm calling it guardianship on purpose, would be that I have a net around me of support and care that teaches me, that guides me, but that lets me explore within this net, within this space, have a little bit fun, bounce around the walls, be a little weird, do whatever, but allows me the safetyness and protection around me. Like I'm surrounded by these adults and I'm in the center of it and I'm just figuring myself out, making mistakes and doing whatever because I haven't had that much time on this earth and I don't know any better. And when I do the things that aren't really great, when I'm harming people, when I'm X, Y, Z, those adults tell me why. I need to be better, not just for myself, but to others, you know? And then I grow up and that safety net slowly fades away because people die, people move. As you get older, your parents get older. And as you get older, you're, you want to be independent. So as I get older, that safety net is away, but I still know that I have that net 
in the back of my mind. I have those people there, whether they're with me or not, because they gave me the foundation when I grew up. And unfortunately, a lot of us didn't grow up with that for many reasons, from like the worst of the worst reasons to some more just neglectful like reasons and some more just parents being absent-minded or thinking that they were doing the thing that their parents did and that that would be good enough because they were fine. But our generation and younger are proving that fine isn't enough. So it makes sense to me that we're redefining and reevaluating something like the efficacy of child stars or children in entertainment. Because I think for a lot of us and a lot of child stars that we're hearing from, it's not enough. What happened to them, what they experienced, what they dealt with, if they had had in my offering, in my vision, obviously there are other factors at play, but for this video, in my idea, if they had had adults that were safe to be around, you already have so many problems eliminated, but on top, and, and there's still the issues with the companies and stuff like that, sure. They're still working within a system and an institution that is corrupt as well. But having adults around them that are safe, having adults around them that are allowing them to, if you want to go into entertainment and acting, go ahead and we are your net around you. It's no surprise that there are certain stars that people are like, wow, they turned out great. And a lot of those stars, their parents were there. Their parents, guardians were around them all the time. They had somebody with them that had their back. And so I think that if more of us, whether we want to have kids or not, whether we can have kids or not, cared about the kids at the bare minimum, this shouldn't even be a conversation, but at the bare fucking minimum, cared about the kids and not in the way of controlling the kids, telling the kids what they should and shouldn't do, not in the authoritative traditional way of overbearing care. We're moving forward. We're changing things. Age of Aquarius. So if we lived in a world where we all cared more about the kids and allowing them to explore and learn themselves and make mistakes and just be a guardian, a net around them, still guiding, still caring for, still there, but at a bit of a distance to give them room to grow and become their own people. I don't know. I, I'm curious to see what kind of world that would look like or how well adjusted some of us would be. How much more well adjusted some of us, girl. I think I'm realizing that at the end of the day, my philosophy is that we need to look out for each other a bit more. Obviously, you can't do it all the time, all day, every day to every single person. It's, they don't make it easy, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And if there is one thing we should all agree on, it's that the babies, the babies need us to give them room and space to be, but they still need us. So we still need to be around them. So I think if there are parents out there, guardians, that are curious to try this, this to, to implement some of these youth liberation ideas. Cause again, anarchy, it's not for everybody, right? <laughs> like some people might see that and be like, what? No, bit hard now, you know, and that's fair. But hey, let me allow you a creative, a creative offering. You can pick and choose stuff. You don't have to do all of one thing, right? So if you see some things from psychologists, from philosophers from random babysitters on the internet and then you read about a little bit about youth liberation and you and you pick from all of these different pieces to figure out how you want to raise and care for and be a guardian to any child in your life then fuck yeah in my opinion that's what I think because clearly all this other old shit ain't working so we got to make new shit but you don't got to reinvent the wheel so let's let's make new shit with all the other shit that's around anyway you know what I'm saying you know what I'm trying to say I don't want no kind of kids Maybe I'll like adopt in the future, but also not really. I'm not really thinking, ah, I'm good. But listen, as a funny <laughs> side anecdote, I'm gonna actually put this on the Patreon. I'm gonna put this next part on the Patreon so you can join if you want to. It's just a little story, but because I like to do extended versions for the patrons. But anyway, for the rest of y'all, be sure to feed your plets, water your plets, and remember that you can always change your mind because you can. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.